Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and in the studio with me today is Gail J. Cummings. Gail is a JD. She has a number of certifications, and I am going to have her tell you all about them. But first, Gail, welcome and thank you for well, being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Fran. It's really a pleasure to be here. Well, you know, we met a few months ago, um, and I was just really intrigued by what you do and how you do it, and the way that your coaching specifically helps entrepreneurs. But before I dive into that, again, I mentioned you have a number of certifications, and I think that's part of what makes you unique as a coach. Can you share with the audience your journey towards learning and certifications? Yes, actually I can. I think uh, based on the fact that I have all of these degrees, I think it's fairly obvious that I love school. Mm -hmm. I've always loved school and mm -hmm. I always love learning and I consider mm -hmm. myself a lifelong learner. And one of the things that is so exciting about my practice is that while I teach and guide others, I also learn from them. Mm, and so very it's authentic. very much, yes, it's very mm -hmm. authentic and it's very mm -hmm. much a team-based model. Mm -hmm. And so I feel really privileged because I learn every day about new and exciting things from people and they get to learn how to move through whatever's keeping them stuck forward mm -hmm. into their professional world. Mm -hmm. So I started out in law school mm -hmm. and um, my passion has always been people. And so I started out in law school and I practiced law for 17 years. 17 years? Yes. That's a pretty significant <laughs> investment of time. What I was, was your specialty? I was a business lawyer, mm -hmm. and I worked with a lot of healthcare organizations and universities mm -hmm. on contracts and mer mergers and acquisitions and growth and really putting together teams of people to complete the mission of the organization. Mm -hmm. And while I liked being an attorney, and I was told I was good at it, mm -hmm. my real passion was wanting to help people with their personal and professional issues rather than helping organizations with their business problems. Okay. okay. I had gone to law school at the urging of my parents. Uh, my dad's an immigrant mm -hmm. and he wanted me to have what he considered a guaranteed profession. My dream was always to be a psychotherapist. And so I got to the point where I got very authentic with myself and went back to school at Bryn Mawr and mm. got a master's in social service. Wow. And then, in order to do clinical psychotherapy, I had to sit for a licensing exam, which is why I have an LCSW. Mm -hmm. And so that's been my journey, and I've never looked back. Wow. I have merged the business law and the professional world that I came from mm -hmm. with coaching and using my expertise now in human behavior. And what I find myself doing is helping individuals, entrepreneurs, and organizations really figure out what it is they want mm -hmm. around leadership development and business development. And I help them focus on what they want, figure out where they might be stuck, and then access the courage to move forward into the direction that's really a good fit for them, mm -hmm. all the while playing to their strengths which is essentially what I found in my journey, mm -hmm. is that while, and this is true for many people, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in particular find that they're very good at something and they have a permanent, very secure job, but it's not playing to their strengths. Mm -hmm. And so they oftentimes find that that's why they step out of that comfort zone, but they often need some support and hand-holding. Absolutely. And they move into the business that they've really thought about for a long time. Mm -hmm. I love that piece of accessing the courage. Um, I've spoken with so many entrepreneurs and some people do leaps of faith and somewhere in the leap process they find that they don't have a parachute and essentially what you're saying is mm -hmm. you will provide some of that support for them. What does that mm -hmm. look like? You know in terms of people often it takes them a while to say they need help but for them to say that they need help involving therapy, is everyone ready to do that? Well, I think that there's a real fine line between my practice as a therapist, which I mm -hmm. spend 
a good maybe about a third of my time doing, mm -hmm. which really focuses more on what's happened in the past mm -hmm. and possible losses or disappointments, things that have been sitting for a while. Mm -hmm. So we tend to go back, figure it out, and move forward the process mm -hmm. of how you're feeling about it, what's happened, how you're thinking about it, is it getting you stuck? Coaching, on the other hand, is something where someone will come in or an organization will come see me. We start from that day. Mm, We're moving forward. The present and the future. Exactly. Right. It is future. It's, it's today and tomorrow and the next day. And so in that way, it's very different from therapy. And I do use my human behavior background because mm. at base, we're people. Right. Right? We're <laughs> human. And so oftentimes, what is very helpful for people and organizations, because they're made up of people, is to understand what is driving them mm -hmm. and to notice the behavior. Mm. Because until someone notices what they're saying to themselves or what they're doing, they can't make a change. 80% mm. okay. of the work is noticing what is going on. What are you doing? What are you saying to yourself or to others? Okay, okay. Once you realize that, then we take that information, figure out where do you want to be? What in your professional life do you want to change? What's a better fit? Where can you use your strengths? Mm -hmm. And then we move forward. Mm -hmm. And what I tend to say to my clients is, I'm going to hold the courage part. Hmm. And courage is really about quite frankly, having fear and moving forward anyway. Mm. Courage is not about being fearless. Mm -hmm. Courage is not about being anxiety free, mm -hmm. not at all. Or reckless. No, no. not at all. No. When I talk about courage and moving out of your comfort zone and taking mm -hmm. a risk, mm -hmm. I tend to talk about doing it in very small baby steps. Mm -hmm. And I also talk about making sure that it's something you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we talk about a desensitization process. Okay, big word. Yes. Lots of syllables. Yes. Break it down. <laughs> okay, so someone might have anxiety. So for example, uh, the reason that I became an entrepreneur is because I had actually been working for an agency, loving my job, and it was temporary. Mm. And a permanent position came open and I applied. And I didn't get it. Mm. And it, to me, had been my dream job. And I looked around to see what options there were, and I didn't really see any. And so what I then did was I said, well, this is the time. A door has closed, an opportunity has ended. Now is probably the time that I have the least to risk mm -hmm. by moving forward and Absolutely. opening my own business. Absolutely. Create your own window if yes, not a door. Yes, create my own right. window. Right. And so what I did was I did a little consulting so that I could have a salary that I knew was coming in, mm -hmm. and then I began to build my business. Mm -hmm. So instead of just doing it all at once, mm -hmm. I kept a small consulting on the, on the side where I worked as, um, as a therapist for an agency mm -hmm. that needed part-time help. Mm -hmm. And that way, I didn't feel like I was taking this huge risk, but rather a manageable risk. Right. And as my business grew, I stepped back and I ended the consulting and it was a wonderful relationship because mm -hmm. they didn't need me long term and it turns out I didn't need them long term. Right, right. And a so win -win. it is a win-win. Mm -hmm. And I think that the courage to do your own business does not mean that you don't have fears, that you don't have worries, that you don't have anxieties. Mm -hmm. And there are people who come to me and say they want to do a particular endeavor. And oftentimes, for them, the desensitization process includes them saving up money, mm, re right. redoing their expenses, looking right. at their budgets, mm -hmm. and maybe staying full time at their job for another six months, mm -hmm. and then doing some surveying and marketing to see mm -hmm. what the needs are. Other people are ready, and their comfort zone is such that they can step out of it in a more in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think that the most important piece is that everybody be authentic with themselves mm -hmm. and be honest about what kind of risks they take. Mm -hmm. Because it does take a little while to get comfortable with being afraid, being worried, and yet doing it anyway. There's a big difference between how we feel and what we do. So we might feel worried, but we can still go forward and open a business. We might be a little bit anxious, mm -hmm. but we can take the opportunity to climb the mountain. Right. Speaking of mountains, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of mountains, and I know it was off camera, but I do want to bring it uh -huh. in. 
How cool is it that your son climbed Mount Kilimanjaro? Yeah. My cool son is, is very adventurous, mm -hmm. and after he finished law school, he took the New York bar exam mm -hmm. and decided that he wanted to climb K Mount Kilimanjaro. Hey, I mean, after you do the bar, yep. why not? Yep. <laughs> and part of his uh, motivation was to challenge himself. Mm -hmm. And he would likely tell you if he was here that he had some concerns and mm -hmm. was worried about the challenge, and he moved through it. Mm -hmm. He moved through those concerns and those worries, and he accomplished his goal. And I actually heard, I eventually got a picture from him at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. So the internet and social media <laughs> exists in places we'd never imagine. Mm -hmm. Additionally, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, he encouraged me and his younger brother to join him in Argentina to trek on a glacier. Wow. Yes. That's not an everyday event. No, okay, now, just go trekking. <laughs> I have a confession. <laughs> okay. I'm from New York City, mm -hmm. and I'm a city girl, mm -hmm. and I usually find myself high hailing heels. a taxi. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> right, high heels taxi, right. I got yes, it. Yes, that's I got what it. I tend to find right. myself doing, getting to mm -hmm. work, and living in Philadelphia, also in Center mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a challenge for me, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't take no for an answer. He's very resilient, and he encouraged me and his brother, and I thank him to this day mm -hmm. because we flew to Argentina to Calafate, and it was amazing. Wow. And there are not too many glaciers in the world that you can see and that you could hike on. And mm -hmm. it was steep and it was cold and it was icy. Mm. Um, no taxis, I imagine. No taxis. Heels no not taxi, required. All boots. <laughs> and they put um, these very interesting metal, they look like roller skates, mm -hmm. and they Velcro onto your hiking boot. But instead mm -hmm. they have spikes right and so he, you have to learn how to walk it's kind of clunky because okay. if you're too close together you fall mm -hmm. but I'm really proud to say that I did that and I have to say that both he and my younger son really were proud of me mm -hmm. and I gained a cool factor with uh, them mm, that I that hadn't can had. That be tough for mom so yeah now yeah. Kilimanjaro is not on my list <laughs> but um, but it's a very interesting and and the other part about climbing the glacier was that I had looked into the tour guide company, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had looked into the weather, and mm -hmm. so I took what was a risk for me and made it smaller by doing all my research. Mm, powerful story. And powerful so for name. me, I took some cautions mm -hmm. and it made it doable for me. Mm -hmm. And I highly advise that for people, that mm -hmm. taking a risk is very personal, mm -hmm. it's very rewarding, and it also allows you to have mastery, mm. oftentimes of something you haven't done, right, such as right. trekking on mm -hmm. a glacier. Right. And I felt this surge of confidence that I didn't anticipate having. Confidence, courage, yes. commitment. Yes. Gail, very, very powerful stories. Before we close, I want to make sure that if anyone wants to get in touch with you, they can. Where should they go to find you? Well, they can go to my website. Mm -hmm. They could also send me an email okay. at gailjcummings at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. And for individuals and organizations that would like to hire me, I do one-on-one. -on -one. I also do a lot of public speaking and workshops mm -hmm. where I find I can reach more people. Mm -hmm. And I also help the participants connect and they find that they uh, feel less alone. Mm -hmm. more supported, and they discover that the other people in the room may be having similar challenges. That's right. That's and right. it leads yes. to a very productive brainstorming session. Mm -hmm. That recently happened in a leadership workshop that I did where the participants realized that they were each having trouble managing their millennial employees. Oh. And by the end of it, we had brainstormed, and they all left feeling so much better and so much more comfortable and normal mm -hmm. that they were not the only ones battling a particular issue. Powerful. Yes. Gail, thank you again for being on the show. Folks can also check you out on your website, gailcummings.com. Absolutely, correct? yes. Correct. And I welcome calls. I welcome emails. Someone wants to just chat and get a sense of my work or have a question, I'm happy to answer. Terrific. So Terrific. thank you so much for oh, having me today. You. This has thank been you. such a pleasure. It's been great to see you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My pl the pleasure's mine. Oh, pleasure's thank you, mine. Fran. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
Well, there you have it. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs like Gail J. Cummings. What a wonderful package. This is part of the value of learning about entrepreneurs, the stories behind the person. Thank you again, Gail, and join us in our next episode of Significant TV.